Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 25 mini series with the Seattle Mariners. And we are about to begin our run in the 2026 playoffs. Uh, could go on for three series, could be over in as quickly as three games, which would be a bitter disappointment because our Mariners had a fantastic regular season, a 112 and 50 record, won the American League West for the second time in three seasons during this playthrough and we will have home field advantage for as long as this team is alive in the playoffs. We've had some really good news and some really bad news since the regular season ended and we simmed through the wild card series which we were obviously not a part of. The first piece of good news is that uh, we had several key injuries and the final few weeks of the season, which uh, were very disappointing. But perhaps the most significant injury is uh, recovered. Juan Soto, uh, who was banged up at the end of the regular season, is now completely healthy, which is very positive for our offense. Unfortunately, uh, Luis Castillo and Josh Lowe, who both got hurt with uh, two-week injuries in the end of September, are hopefully here sitting on October 11th close to being ready to pitch in the case of Castillo and ready to play in the case of Lowe, but they're not quite there yet. So we're going to have some interesting decisions to make with them when we try to figure out our 26-man playoff roster. So one piece of good news and two pieces of bad news on the injury front we do have some really good news as far as our owner goals for this year. Uh, clearly, when ownership was just looking for a winning record and we're 112 and 50, they're going to be pleased with that. Cole Young had a good, solid year, was named an all star as our new second baseman this year as a rookie. Most importantly, and this is a very quick and rapid 180 from our owner. But uh, he finally agrees that Juan Soto is a power hitter. So we have uh, finally achieved that goal, it looks like. We signed Soto before the 2025 season when he was coming off a year when he led the Yankees in home runs and led the league in home runs, more importantly. Didn't have a great first season with us, uh, but he led the league in home runs again this year with us and apparently he is officially a power hitter again which is positive and we've also increased our attendance so those are all positive things for the near-term goals medium-term goal was to increase fan interest and uh, this metric has always been a little underwhelming to me in the game Sometimes it moves too much. Sometimes it seems like it doesn't move enough. Sometimes uh, logical things that you can con control help the metric. And then sometimes it seems like illogical things will hurt the metric just as much, if not more. It seems like it's been tweaked a little bit this year, but in my view, it's still not perfect because we're back to the 82 that we were when we first got the goal. But we were an 86 fan interest at the start of this 2026 season. And as I noted, we went 112 and 50. Uh, so if going 112 and 50 is going to cause a degradation in fan interest over the course of a season, it seems like it's a uh, very difficult metric to make progress with. Um, so I think there's still a little tweaking that hopefully will be taking place on that from the developers. Uh, as far as I know, the beta for the third patch is not quite out yet, but uh, rumor are it will be out in the next uh, day or two, hopefully. And maybe we'll have a fully approved uh, third version of this game within the next few days. But overall, the owner goal information was bad, uh, was good, with the exception of the bad um, performance by us on fan interest but like I said if you go 112 and 50 and your fan interest degrades I just don't know what else more they wanted us to do I guess we had to win 120 games the last thing that is negative 
And the most important thing that is negative is that uh, the wild card series did not go well for us. And we are going to be hosting the Baltimore Orioles, who, if you've watched much of this season, were the second best team in the American League basically throughout the first 95% of the season. The Red Sox, with a furious finish, uh, did get past them by one game in the AL East when all was said and done. And then the Orioles um, took out an 87-win Kansas City Royals team in their wildcard series. So we have got... um, really a much tougher matchup in the ALDS than the Red Sox are going to have, which is uh, disappointing. We're going up uh, one of the few hundred win teams in all of baseball this year, despite us having the most wins in baseball, while the Red Sox, who we were 10 games better than this year, are going to be going up against an 87-win Cleveland Guardians team. So things did not break well for us, and we're going to be facing a very strong Baltimore Orioles team in the American League Division Series. Hopefully we'll have enough to get through it, but as I noted at the uh, start of the episode... I guess we're still technically in the start of the episode since I haven't really done anything yet. But as I noted earlier in the episode, we're still waiting to find out what's going on with Luis Castillo and Josh Lowe. And with a tough series ahead of us, I think I want to ensure that those two players are on our roster since I'm crossing my fingers that after perhaps those first two games of the series at home, with a day off after that, they might be ready for game three when we're in Baltimore. But there's certainly a risk to having those players on the 26-man playoff roster and then not getting anything from them either. And given that we're going to be playing against such a good team, the Orioles in the ALDS, um, we're going to go with both Lowe and Castillo on the 26-man roster. This could definitely come back to hurt us if one or both of those players is unable to really contribute in this series. But there are two players who had big years for us, and Castillo had a historic year for the Mariners this year. So Lowe has been injured since the 29th with some elbow inflammation. We put him on the 10-day IL with the season over. He's eligible to come off of that any time. It was supposed to be about a two-week injury at the time. Still says that his recovery time is unknown. But since we typically go to 12 pitchers and 14 position players in the playoffs, what we've done is um, bring up a guy who was with us uh, the last season and a half, who we ended up signing to a minor league contract this year, spent the entire year in AAA, and that's Seth Brown, another left-handed hitter who can go right into left field for low where he was. He's not nearly the player that Josh Lowe is, either defensively or particularly offensively. Lowe had a fantastic year for us, 300 at batting average, 19 homers and 73 ribbies and 476 at-bats, primarily against right-handed pitching. But Brown at least gives us another left-handed bat in the lineup, and the hope is that Maybe by the third game of the series in Baltimore, Lowe's ready to go back in the lineup, and then Brown can be a bench guy for us. And if we're fortunate enough to get to the ALDS and we're healthy at the time, we will um, likely send Brown um, back down 
and the guy who we had to leave off the playoff roster um, when we decided to have Brown up was Nick Allen, who would have been on the team as a utility infielder, but felt like getting another left-handed bat was more important. So that's the situation as far as the lineups. Pitching-wise, I was a little wrong about this. Um, Castillo's actually only been hurt for eight days now. It was also a two-week strained hamstring when he suffered it. It should not have any impact on his throwing, but it will influence his running, potentially his ability to field his position, and maybe he'll exacerbate the hammy when he's out there on the mound. So it was a Injury of about two weeks. We're only eight days in now. My hope is that we get a little lucky. And again, similar to um, low, you know, we're just seeing unknown for recovery time right now. So there's no guarantees what's going to happen here. I'd love to have him back for game three. Realistically, it might not be till game four. And it's conceivable that he might not be ready for Game 4 either. Um, honestly, if we get to Game 4, assuming that we've used Lance McCullers out of the bullpen in the series, we'll probably just roll the dice with Castillo, even if he's still banged up then. Coming off of, as I mentioned, a brilliant year, 24-1 and record, Won the pitching triple crown with the 24 wins, the 233 strikeouts, the 252 ERA, and also led the league in innings pitched, whip, quality start percentage, fit minus, and war. So it would be an absolute shock if Castillo was not uh, the Cy Young Award winner this year, and he'll probably get some MVP votes as well. We wanted to give him a chance to win the pitching triple crown, so on the second to last day of the season, we pitched him, and of course he strained the hammy in that outing, but we were um, concerned, I guess, that um, at the time, Ricky Tiedman was only um, 10 strikeouts behind Castillo. Castillo had 228 before that final game that he pitched and Tiedman would have had four full days of rest um, for Toronto for the final game of the season so we thought that he might pitch one more time but they ended up um, shutting him down so that ensured that Castillo did end up winning the pitching triple crown which I was trying to get him but it may now certainly cost us here in the playoffs my thought is hopefully he's healthy by game three or game four, but if he's not, if we get to a game four, it's going to be a pivotal game because it's either going to be a potential clincher for us if we're up two to one, or it's going to be a must-win game for us if we're down two to one. And um, I think at that point, we've got to put Castillo on the mound, even if uh, he might exacerbate the injury of that hammy supposedly it's not going to impact his throwing and uh if he does strain the hammy in a game four ALDS loss that ends the season for us he'll have a lot of time to um hopefully recover from it over the course of the off season so we'll see what happens with both Castillo and Lowe but we are putting them both onto this postseason roster here for the very challenging ALDS against the Orioles, or at least we expect it to be a very challenging series. When we look at things, uh, we, as we've talked about in the past, the best offense in baseball, the best pitching staff in baseball, but we did have a losing record against Baltimore this year. They were second in the AL in runs scored. We're the only team that was better than them, and we only scored eight runs more than they did. And they also had a good pitching staff, ranking fifth in the American League. As I mentioned, they were the team that we were talking about all year as the team that was closest to us in the standings until basically the final couple days of the year when uh, we were wondering whether we'd end up with the best record in the AL 
period. Um, and the way that the playoff brackets broke, um, our 112 and 50 team, as I said, despite having the best record in baseball, um, somehow ends up facing one of the only two other teams in baseball that had a hundred year wins this year in the, uh, ALDS. So not an optimal bracket for us, but it is what it is. Excellent pitching matchup here today in game number one. Corbin Burns, the veteran on the mound for Baltimore, 14 and eight with a 4.75 ERA this season. Uh, he had a really good first season in Baltimore, has not been as great the last two years, but still throws in the mid to high 90s. Still well above average stuff, above average movement, above average control, and a very impressive five-pitch arsenal for the veteran righty. We've got George Kirby on the mound, 12-3 uh, record this year with a 3.76 ERA, led the league in walks per nine innings and strikeout to walk ratio for a second consecutive year. Doesn't have the same kind of stuff, but has a pinpoint control. Doesn't have the same kind of arsenal, but also does have five pitches. So should be a good pitching matchup today in Seattle. Had to pause there for a moment and go back and just make sure my lineups were set the way that I wanted them and my bench was set the way that I wanted them. So we're going to be without low. Certainly for this next game, since he's listed as actually out. We'll find out when he is able to return again, maybe game three, and then we'll see what happens with Mr. Castillo as well. But can Kirby get us off to a good start in this series? We do get a four to three victory, went into the bullpens for the decision. Uh, Brian Wu, former starter for us who worked out of the pen this year, gets the win. Yenier Cano with the loss. Rally and Ford, the starting catcher and the future catcher, likely, who's played first and third base primarily this year, both had home runs for us. Mariners uh, jumped out to a 1-0 lead and then had a 3-1 lead after 5. Uh, well, we are the Mariners. Um, <laughs> don't know why I was confused by that. Baltimore chipped back with runs in the 6th and the ninth to tie it. And then Seth Brown playing for low with a run scoring double in the bottom of the 11th to help the Mariners uh, escape with a victory. Only nine hits for the Mariners today, but only five for Baltimore, so not a ton of offense. A couple ribble, ribbies from Rally with the homer. Ford, of course, with a ribby with the homer. And then Seth Brown with the big blow in the 11th inning. Solid game from Kirby, Bernardino, Brash, Santos, Munoz, and Wu all uh, pitched for us. Diagnosis pending on Santos for an injury. Um, so that is, as I often say, not necessarily optimal. But we got the W in game number one, which was important. We'll finish the day, move on to game number two. And Santos with a strained oblique, day-to-day -day for five days. Minimal impact on everything. Um, I think we're going to bench him for this next game, especially since he just pitched yesterday. That'll give him a game off, a day off tomorrow. And we'll see what he looks like again for the first game in Baltimore. Certainly not optimal. But it is what it is. It's very rarely ever optimal come playoff time. Tariq Skubal on the mound for the Orioles, 16 and 8 with a 3.69 ERA this year, plus stuff, above average movement, and very good control. Another pitcher with a five pitch arsenal. He is a lefty. Aaron Savale on the mound for us, uh, signed him as a free agent in January after he lingered on the market a bit, and he had an outstanding year for us. 16-4 record, 2.92 ERA. 
six-pitch arsenal for Savale and uh, would love to get another good outing from him today. Certainly, after winning the first game of the series, the goal is to be heading to Baltimore up two games to none, but we've got another likely excellent pitching matchup here today in game number two. I guess I should see if um, anyone's healthy. Castillo still banged up. We know Santos is banged up, and Josh Lowe still suffering from that elbow inflammation here. Game number two. 13 to 3 win for Seattle. Um, so that is good. Savale got the win. Scubal the loss. Uh, Rodriguez, five ribbies for us. Only one homer. Glaber Torres, who had a uh, nice second year for us, just like um, Juan Soto did. Soto's second year, certainly better than Torres, but both were much improved their second year in Seattle. So that is positive. Uh, three runs in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and eighth innings on the way to a 13-3 victory. The middle of the order, um, absolutely dominant. Three, home, uh, three ribbies from Soto, five from J-Rod, and three from Torres. They all had multiple pit hit games. They all scored runs. Uh, so only one home run, uh, but still a lot of offense. Savale with a quality start. McCullers Jr. did pitch two and two-thirds out of the bullpen, so that uh, may make it a little more challenging as far as Castillo in game number four for us. Um, we might kind of be forced with Castillo in game number four, even if he's still injured at this point. But we have put ourselves in a position where if we win game number three in Baltimore, then we're going to have some time off before a potential ALCS um, where hopefully both Lowe and Castillo will be able to get healthy. And if we win game number three, we'd actually be set up perfectly where we'd have Castillo ready to go on the mound for game one of the ALCS. I know we're certainly getting ahead of ourselves right now, but... Um, Taking a 2 nothing lead certainly gives us the opportunity to start um, perhaps thinking about being a little bit greedy. And we've moved to the off day, and one piece of good news, Lowe um, looks ready to come back. So we're going to put him in the lineup, move him to the number 7 hole, drop Cal Raleigh back to 9. Unfortunately, um, Castillo now only one day away from potentially needing to start is uh, still uncertain as far as when he'll be healthy. So uh, the goal is to hopefully, I guess he's two days away at this point. We do have an off day today. Um, but the goal is to hopefully go out and win tomorrow, um, in which case, knock on wood, Castillo should almost certainly be ready to go for an ALCS start. Santos, um, still going to be out four days with that mild oblique strain. I guess he's not technically out. He's day-to-day. -day. We'll probably sit him again tomorrow for game three, simply because we've had the day off today. So the bullpen, especially with only... McCullers Jr. pitching out of the bullpen yesterday. The bullpen should basically be fully rested. Stinks to be losing our stopper, who led the AL in games and holds and pitched over 115 innings with a sub-3 ERA for us. But everyone else is just going to have to pick up the slack tomorrow. Who did we DFA? Matthew Boyd. Injured career over. Oh, the A's picked him up um, as a uh, Rule 5 pick from us, I believe, and they must have just sent him back. Oh, he suffered a torn UCL on the final day of the season. 
Um, so the A's graciously uh, shipped him back to us. That sounds like something that uh, John Fisher might do. And I was going to say I thought we had simmed a day ahead when I clicked forward, but uh, because Boyd was DFA'd, we had to figure out what to do with him. So I was going to say Castillo still hurt, but there still is hope. We'll click forward and he'll be better. And he is! Ooh, now do we pitch him in game th three? I'm going to get greedy here, and I'm not going to pitch him in game three. I would love to have things set up so we'd have him ready to go. Game number one of the ALCS. If we lose today... He'll have an extra day of rest. Um, I do have to remember to uh, bench Santos for at least today, and we'll worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow. We're going to roll the dice and save Castillo for game four. Give him an extra day of rest. And hopefully win even though we're not pitching him and then have him and the rotation perfectly set up the way that we would want it for for an ALCS, which looks like it's likely to be against the Red Sox, although um, no home team is lost yet. So the Guardians and the Orioles are still certainly both in the series. Logan Gilbert on the mound for us. A bit of a down year for him. 11-12 and 12 record, 4.46 ERA. Pretty hard to imagine um, a pitcher having a losing record on a 112-win team as a starter, but uh, that's what Gilbert did do this season. Uh, had a brilliant year for us the first year of this sim in 2024. Led the league in wins a year ago and um, definitely had his worst season of the three this year. He's set to make about $16.5 million next year, so he's going to be a difficult decision for us in the offseason as he heads into his final arbitration-eligible year. Grayson Rodriguez, the right-hander on the mound for the Orioles, 13-5 and with a 3.54 ERA. Another guy with a very versatile and high-quality arsenal. And the Orioles beat us today, so uh, Castillo will get his chance tomorrow. Got home runs from J-Rod and Torres. Uh, they got homers, though, from Gunnar Henderson and Peyton Burdick. Uh, Cano with the win in relief. Yeah, uh, ugly outing for Logan Gilbert. Eight hits, four walks, seven earned runs over five and two-thirds innings. Seven hits for ours, uh, eight for them. Orioles jumped out to a 2 nothing lead. The teams traded five spots in the sixth inning, so we took a 5-2 to two lead, quickly gave it right back, and they were up 7-5. to five. Got a run in the eighth, uh, but... Too little, too late, and uh, we head to game number four of this series tomorrow in Baltimore. We're going to give Santos another game off. If we give him the day of rest today, it looks like his recovery time's down to two days. So with the off day tomorrow, he should be ready for a potential game number five. We did only use one reliever yesterday. And we've got our ace back on the mound. We talked about the brilliant season Castillo had. Lost just once in the regular season. It was his uh, second or third to last start of the year. He had a 24-0 and record, ended up 24-1. and um, Was hoping to have a 
undefeated season for a starting pitcher, which would have been an insane thing to see happen. 24 and 1, still obviously historic. So we've got our ace on the mound here for game four as we try to avoid having to play a fifth game. And you can see the Red Sox have already dispatched the Guardians. So they're going to have a little more rest time than us. Uh, the hope is that we don't have to go to game five and it's not a lot more rest time than us. Shane Baz on the mound, 11 and 7 with a 4.30 ERA. So the pitching matchup certainly favors our Mariners here today. I just realized that I don't think I've uh, changed. And some of you may remember this from uh, when it happened, but I don't think I actually changed our backups when I moved um, from low to brown. So I'm going to uh, work on the depth chart. Hold, please. All right. I'm going to use the fact that I hadn't updated the depth chart when we moved low back into the lineup as the reason that we lost that game number three now that the lineup is the way that I want it and we have a healthy Castillo on the mound we do not get the win today so we are headed back to Seattle five to four loss Wu with the loss and relief after he got the win in game number one so there have been uh three one-run games in the series we've lost two of those three we did have the route in game number two took a three to one lead in the second inning they chipped away with runs in the fourth and the fifth took the lead back in the seventh they came back and tied it in the bottom of the ninth and then won it in the bottom of the 11th on a single by vientos so we emptied out the bullpen. Castillo uh, it's a quality start, but not certainly the type of start that he's typically put forth this year. Blown save from Munoz. He tried to go two innings, so it seems like the fact that we uh, didn't have Santos probably caused us to uh, push Munoz a little more than we would have otherwise. So we are heading to a deciding game number five against these Baltimore Orioles here in the 2026 ALDS and we've got the only team in baseball that was better than the Orioles but worse than our Mariners waiting for us in the ALCS and I'm sure the Red Sox are just enjoying all of that extra rest that they're getting right now. And as we get ready for game number five, the deciding game of this ALDS, you may have noticed that uh, it was the International Free Agent Showcase today. We haven't spent any time on that. We will uh, find out whether our season is over or not. And uh, if it's over, We'll cry ourselves to sleep while looking at the international amateur free agents. And if we win today, we'll take a deep breath and relax momentarily while investigating those international amateur free agents. But the first focus is going to be on hopefully ensuring that every game in this series is won by the home team and uh, having that home field advantage pay off for us. We've got Kirby back on the mound today. Uh, you can see Santos is healthy. Pretty sure that he's not benched anymore. Just want to be absolutely sure. So we should have a um, full bullpen. Everyone on the team is healthy and well at this point, although Rally's in a bit of a slump, which is not optimal. Scooball. I thought he pitched more recently than that. I guess it was five days ago. But there's been days off, so I think they moved him up in the series. I feel like he pitched game number two. Yeah, he pitched game number two, so they... Uh... Hmm. 
jumped over Burns? That's an interesting decision. Maybe they're going to use Scubal as the starter lefty to get us to put in the left the right-handed focus lineup or the right-handed hitting lineup um and then they're going to bring in burns after a couple of innings i'm not sure what their plan is hopefully it won't work out but it does work out for them and a brilliant regular season by the mariners has been completely wasted Took a 2-0 lead in the ALDS on the Orioles and then lost three in a row. Brian Wu, who we recently signed to an extension, uh, involved in three decisions working out of the bullpen. And he was the loser in the fourth and fifth games of the series. Taking a look at the box score, uh, we had a 2-1 to -one lead after four. They took the lead in the eighth. In the ninth, Basabe with a bases loaded walk in the bottom of the ninth to tie things up. And then they exploded on us with six runs in the top of the 12th. So it will be an all AL East World Series this year. Kirby with a good start. Santos gave up a run in relief. And then Wu and McCullers were not good in that 12th inning. And Scooball, quality start for him, and they didn't use Burns at all. Did they accelerate Burns into game four, and I just missed it? No. Well, they clearly outmanaged me. Um, they're going to have Burnsy ready for... The ALCS and our Seattle Mariners are going home and definitely a disappointing outcome after the great regular season that we had. Um, we ended up getting both Lowe and Castillo back. And honestly, we won the first two games when we didn't have Lowe and Castillo we had low back for the last three games of the year, or yeah, of the year, unfortunately. And um, we decided to start Castillo in game number four rather than game number three. So maybe missing Santos in those middle games of the series was not optimal for us, but it's really hard to say the uh, injuries cost us. We just got beat by a better team. So I noted uh, when I saw the Orioles, when I was offline, win that um, series against the Royals. And I figured out that 112-win um, team in a Major League Baseball where there's only 300-win teams in all of baseball. And somehow the draw works out that we have to play one of the other 100-win teams in the ALDS. I felt like that was not a good omen. And it ended up being a very poor omen for our Seattle Mariners who were uh, back in the playoffs. But I guess um, if you're one of the Mariners fans who is watching this episode and watching this series, and I know there's many of you out there, you're probably uh, quite familiar with the way this went down because uh, about a quarter of a century earlier, you had a team that won even more games that uh, suffered some bitter playoff disappointment as well. So I was hoping to do uh, better for you this time. But unfortunately, um, the season's over for Seattle. And uh, the team is not likely to be as good next year as it was this season. You can see with the contract situation here, we're set to be spending about $25 million more on the team next year. And that's guaranteeing that we lose Lance McCullers Jr., 
who was our fifth starter this year, our fourth starter a year ago before we signed Savale. But it's very conceivable that Gilbert and or Rally may not be back either as we try to um, likely need to save some money to uh, get this budget under control. Honestly, Melendez, Lowe, Santos, um, there's some guys set to make some decent money in arbitration, and we may have some difficult decisions to make to try to get the salary situation a little more palatable for ownership next year. So my hope is that we still made over $30 million this year for ownership, and we did, as I talked about, incredibly well on the four goals that we needed to complete this year so my hope is maybe we'll get a little bit of a bump to 260 million or so in terms of a budget for next year which will give us a little more financial flexibility to bring back as many of these players as possible since i really like this team that we've built but we will find all that out in the future at this point it's uh sadly time to do our end of season review and it was a brilliant regular season as we've talked about for the Mariners 112 and 50 record which was actually a game worse than expectations had a 658 winning percentage against lefties 702 winning percentage against righties so uh, both of those numbers significantly improved from our 500 team a year ago that was 11 above 500 against righties, but 11 below 500 against lefties. Dominant offense, first in the American League and first in baseball and runs scored. And we were in the top three in every offensive category or every major offensive category. And similarly, the best pitching staff in the AL, the best pitching staff in baseball, first in runs allowed and we were in the top three in every pitching and defensive category as well. So uh, just a juggernaut of a team during the regular season that um, did struggle against the Orioles, as we talked about. We lost uh, four of seven to them in the regular season, and we proceeded to uh, lose three of five to them in the ALDS loss. Taking a look at our pitching staff, uh, we've already talked a lot about all the starters. Castillo, an incredible historic season. Kirby was very good. Gilbert, off year, headed to arbitration. Uh, Savale, excellent first season with us. We got him at a pretty bargain contract after he lingered on the free agent market for a while. Team option for him next year that we are likely to exercise uh, because McCullers Jr. is also set to be a free agent and he's uh, looking for even more. The last time we checked in, he was looking for about $17 million a year. He's looking for over $20 million a year. So there's no way that we'll be able to bring McCullers and Gilbert back. Um, the question is whether we'll be able to bring either of them back. Andres Munoz, a solid year as our closer, only got 46 and two-thirds innings out of him. Um, probably the stopper role from Santos um, sucked up a few innings for him. We were also probably just so dominant that there were fewer save situations than a year ago since we were blowing teams out frequently, but a 270 ERA and a ridiculous 15.6 strikeouts per nine innings for the closer. Santos, we've talked about, very nice year for us as we finally moved him into the stopper role. Matt Brash, uh, an excellent year as well, 1.75 ERA, over 56 and two-thirds innings, uh, 11 strikeouts per nine. Uh, the walks, still an issue with 28 and 56 and two-thirds innings, but he cut the home runs allowed down significantly from 14 a year ago to just two this past season. Gabe Spire remains a solid left-handed arm out of the pen, five and three with a 2.98 ERA. Going to be making about $2.8 million next year. Uh, he's a guy whose job could be in jeopardy. Wu 
was disastrous in the playoffs for us this year. Um, we talked about that. A one and two record in five games as a reliever. Uh, five games for the team. I don't think he pitched in all five games. He pitched in uh, three games and he was involved in the decision in all three games that he pitched. Had a uh, pretty solid year for us working out of the pen. He could conceivably end up back in the rotation next season with a likely departure of Gilbert and or McCullers. Bryce Miller, um, if we lose both Gilbert and McCullers, could also end up back in the rotation. He was a solid right-handed arm out of the bullpen for us this year. And then Brennan Bernardino, uh, 579 ERA over 37 and a third innings as a lefty working out of the pen. Did not do a great job for us, uh, was below replacement level. He would not have um, been on the playoff roster if the lefty Bennett Souza hadn't had that rotator cuff strain in late September. Souza was uh, much better than Bernardino with a 296 ERA and 10.8 strikeouts per nine innings as a lefty out of the pen for us. So we probably missed him a little bit in the playoffs, but uh, certainly it does not appear that uh, Bernardino was the reason that we lost in the postseason. Turning to our everyday players, um, we're going to have an interesting decision on Cal Rowley. He's going to be turning 30 in about a month, and he had the worst year of his three years with us in charge of the Mariners. Uh, batting average dipped to 217, homers fell to 20, 83 WRC plus, and only a win above replacement level. And he's set to make almost $13 million next year in his final arbitration eligible season. So a lot of what happens with Rally is going to uh, be, be dependent on what happens with our budget. If we get a bump in our budget, I could see a scenario where he's back. If our budget gets cut, he's almost certainly not back. And if our budget stays where it is, that's where the decisions get pretty interesting. Under fear of potentially having to move on from Rally, uh, we did sign Tyler Stevenson, who was a minor league free agent signing this January, um, to an extension. Uh, he did a nice job for us, playing primarily against left-handed pitching uh, behind the plate. Good in the clubhouse, decent defensively, um, decent bat. He actually struggled in the second half of the year. The batting average dipped to 204 when all was said and done. Um, 67 WRC plus. So honestly, uh, I hadn't checked in on him um, recently, but after he signed that extension, his performance kind of went down the tubes. Take a look at these batting splits to see how bad it was. And uh, you can see 286, 273, 214, and 292 batting averages the first four months of the season. He was hitless in the month of August and hit just a buck 11 in September. Um, so he really struggled after we signed him to that extension. Probably not the best omen for another guy who's also 30 years old now. Maybe that uh, opens the door to rally returning. Uh, the reason we could close that door, though, is Harry Ford. He played primarily first and third this year as a rookie and uh, had a solid year. The batting average ended up dipping to 245, but still had 32 doubles, 17 homers, 23 stolen bases, um, a 114 WRC plus, and a 3.2 war as a rookie. As I said, he played primarily first and third for us, uh, but he did start eight games at catcher, also played and left for us on occasion. And his ratings indicate he could be a more than acceptable defensive catcher. He's actually a pretty good defensive catcher. So if we do move on from rally this offseason, uh, Ford will likely slot right into catcher. William Lugo, uh, the Rule 5 acquisition, the right-handed hitter who we picked up from the Mets organization, was solid, primarily playing against left-handers, hit 261. Eight homers and 43 ribbies and 249 at bats, 111 WRC plus. He will likely be in the mix uh, for first base again next year. Oslevis Basabe, uh, 
primarily uh, similar, played mainly against left-handed pitching, except when Bo Bichette was banged up. Hit 274 uh, in 270 at-bats. 12 stolen bases, 105 WRC+. Plus. Uh, have no problem if he's a guy who's a utility infielder for us against right-handed pitching in the lineup every day against left-handed pitching. I think he did well in that role. Cole Young, an all-star, is a rookie. Played both second and short for us. 272 average, 29 doubles, 4 triples, 9 homers, 31 steals. Added up to a 127 WRC+. Plus and a 5.2 war. Scored almost 100 runs. Uh, he should be back as our second baseman again next year. Glaber Torres, as we talked about, uh, was below average his first year in Seattle. He was a bit above average offensively this year with a 104 WRC+. plus. He's also a guy who actually played better in the second half of the season. Finished with a 267 average, 22 homers, 89 ribbies. Still hoping for a bit more from him offensively, given that we're spending 18 million a year on him. But he should be back at third next year. And Bo Bichette uh, ended up missing close to 40 games uh, with some injuries. I believe it was plantar fasciitis through the middle of the season. But had a uh, solid year for us. 277 average, 13 homers, 76 ribbies, stole 14 bases. Was a league average offensive player. Put up a war of close to three uh, with some solid defense at short. Certainly not a superstar, but better than what we've had at shortstop in previous seasons. Josh Lowe, uh, we talked about him earlier, hit 300 for us, 19 homers, 73 ribbies, uh, playing primarily against right-handed pitching, put up that 141 WRC+, plus, a war of more than five. Uh, that was a trade that really worked out well for us. Hunter Renfro picked him up as a free agent this past offseason to focus on playing against left-handed pitching and that's primarily what he did and he did a great job in that role 315 average 11 homers 34 ribbies and 219 at bats a 149 wrc plus he will likely be back with us next year uh, in a backup outfielder role likely starting against lefties MJ Melendez was in the platoon with Renfro so he ended up starting 127 games 295 average, 27 homers, 88 ribbies, a 152 WRC plus. That uh, platoon in left field of Melendez and uh, Renfro ended up being extremely effective for us. Um, although actually Melendez played against right, played right field, um, and um, Renfro ended up DH when all was said and done. But the the two were in a platoon, potentially. It's just that we had uh, players playing different positions, but uh, worked out really well with those two specializing against lefties in the case of Renfro and righties in the case of Melendez. And then a couple of monster seasons from the two big guns in the middle of the lineup. Uh, J-Rod, 273 average, uh, so lower than the first two years when he hit 309 both years. But his 41 homers and his 112 ribbies uh, were both the best of this playthrough, and I believe the best of his career. Yet yeah, both uh, career high marks for J. Rod, uh, 138 WRC plus 6.7 WAR, excellent defensive center fielder, um, and he's still not even 26 years old. And then Juan Soto, who is now officially acknowledged as a power hitter after an MVP caliber season, led the league with runs, homers, ribbies, walks, on-base percentage, OPS, and a 177 WRC+. Plus. His 7.4 war ended up tied at the top of the American League with Bobby Witt Jr. I would think uh, it should be an interesting race between Soto, Witt Jr., and Rutschman for American League MVP this year. As we've talked about, it would be 
absolutely shocking if Castillo is not the American League Cy Young Award winner. And with the end of season review done, uh, we'll sim through the next couple weeks, find out who ends up winning the World Series, and uh, see what our budget is going to look like for the 2027 season. And it looks like another very stacked, at least in terms of where we think the players' ceilings are at uh, 15, 16, 17 years old, international amateur free agent class. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, five-star prospects out there among the everyday players and um, even a few pitchers who are interesting as well. We invited a couple of them to our uh last training session actually our first training session so we'll continue uh following that over the coming months uh but right now as i noted time to find out who the world series champion is going to be here in 2026 and unfortunately the one thing we know for sure is that it will not be the seattle mariners And we've got here at Old School Sports and uh, Old School American League Series in the World Series this year between the Boston Red Sox and the Brewers. Uh, the Red Sox easily took out the Orioles four games to one, and the Brewers rallied uh, to come back. I believe it was from a 3-1 deficit to take out the Phillies four games to three in a seven-game series. So the Red Sox or the Brew Crew will be your world champions here in 2026 go brewers and the brewers did take out the red Sox four games to two in the world series uh, so congratulations to milwaukee take a look here as the off season is getting underway uh, we need option year decisions on renfro and savale i think we're likely to execute both of those hitting coach and assistant GM are both leaving. Uh, that's fine. We expected that, and we intentionally did not make offers to either of them. Feel we can uh, upgrade a hitting coach, and we don't really need an assistant GM. Our contract has been extended for two years. Uh, happy that we had a good team record. Happy that we upgraded with Cole Young. Happy that we brought in that power-hitting Juan Soto. It only took him two years to figure that out. Happy that we increased attendance. Still not happy with fan engagement. And again, I do feel uh, it's a little busted for a 112-win team to lose four points in fan interest over the course of a season. Hopefully that'll be something that's tweaked with the uh, new patch whenever it does come out. Wants us to reach the playoffs, upgrade at catcher, increase fan interest, build a top six minor league system, and reach the World Series in the next three years. I think we may already have a top six minor league system. Oh, actually, we've dipped to 15th with the fact that uh, both Young and Ford are no longer prospects. And it looks like Jesus Ayala, who was our IAFA acquisition uh, a couple of years ago, um, not viewed as quite the premium prospect that we thought he might be when we picked him up. He had a buck 84 in rookie ball in the DSL, his uh, first professional action this year. Last year, um, or actually earlier this year, we picked up Cuellar and Contreras as IAFAs. So our only top 50 prospects are the three players, the three primary players we've picked up in the international amateur free agent period these last uh, three seasons. Chris Vanderford, who we picked in the first round this past year, didn't play uh, at all given the timing of the seasons, is viewed as the number 67 prospect in baseball. And then Daniel Garza, who was our second round pick this past year and also did not play is viewed as the 187th prospect in baseball. So we do have some work to do in terms of the farm system. But most importantly, let's go see what that budget is right now. And we got a $4 million bump 
Um, so given the success we had with the owner goals and the success we had on the field and the fact that we made a lot of money this year, quite honestly, a $4 million bump is, um, I'd say a little bit disappointing. You know, like I said, we made $30 million. We did fantastic with the four owner goals that were due this year and we won 112 games on the field. So a little bit disappointing, but it is what it is. And you can see we have negative money available at this point. So we're likely to face some interesting decisions, um, most notably Gilbert and Rally. But it may also be tricky to ensure that some of the arbitration eligible players, notably Melendez, Spire, Lowe, Santos, Brash, even Nick Allen are all uh, back with us next year. Bernardino's spot could be in jeopardy, even though he's not making a ton of money. Clearly, we'll move on from Seth Brown. Um, we'll move on from Casey Mize. Those were both, both basically guys who were in the minors for us um, much of the year, making the major league minimum uh, this past year. Souza, if he recovers from that injury, will probably be back. And then we've still got a lot of guys making the major league minimum. So we're going to have to make some difficult choices with the team this offseason. As I said, it's hard to imagine that we're going to have a pitching staff that is quite as loaded as this one that we put together this year. Everyone three and a half stars or higher as far as their rough look at the ability and uh when Logan Gilbert is by far the worst pitcher on your team, and he's a guy in the two previous seasons, has led the league in war and fit minus one year, led the league in game started and whips another year, and when his performance is by far the worst of any of the pitchers on your team, you know that you're probably in a pretty good spot, but we'll likely be losing Gilbert or McCullers. Um, it's possible we move on from both of them. So we're going to have some interesting decisions to make this offseason, and we'll uh, let you know what we're thinking about them in our next episode. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and hope you have a great day.